Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we have a very special pick a card reading. It's a timeless reading and it contains a message from Mother Earth. And I think with all the chaos of late, this is being recorded on, I'll tell you the date, 6 November. Now you could tune into this anytime. But I'll let you know a little bit about the 6th of November. We've obviously just had a really big time in the collective consciousness. There's been a massive election that's been going on that seems to still be going on. And there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of people up in their heads, people up in their minds. And it's really important that we bring our energy into our bodies. We feel our feet on the ground. We pay our respects to Mother Earth, we acknowledge her, we spend time with her. You know, when we're up in the mind so much and we're just on screens all the time, looking at our phone all the time, we completely forget our bodies. And our body is a patch of Earth, right? We're neglecting our bodies all the time. So what I advise you to do is to relax with this reading, get yourself a little cup of tea. I've got, I'll show you what I've got. I've got myself a little, cup of passion fruit tea, passion fruit and hibiscus, I believe. And my beautiful teapot here that I got from, hang on, it's not in focus. There we go. I got that from Daiso, isn't it beautiful? So yeah, I mean, get yourself a cup of tea, relax with this reading or coffee or a milkshake, whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Whatever helps you to relax. And in this introduction, we're going to, Take a look at some of the messages that I found from White Eagle, and this was posted on Facebook just recently by a really good friend of mine. And what I'll do is I'll copy and paste the entire message. So it's in the description below. So any of those of you who like this message or you wanna share it on your social media, please do share it. If you know the author of this, I would love to know. Um, I don't even know who the author of this is. It was just shared by a dear friend of mine in Belgium. And it contains many really beautiful messages. So I'll just read that out to you. Before I read that out to you, uh, I do wanna acknowledge the Wallamad Eagle people of this land. The card at the bottom, you'll see that's from the saltwater reading cards. This is a really, there you go, that's that one there. It's a very beautiful deck. I'll put the link below so that you'll be able to look it up if you like it. It's an Aboriginal card deck, and I just really wanted to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land when I use this particular deck. And the other thing I wanted to mention before I get into the White Eagle messages <laughs> is to say that I do believe Mother Earth wants everyone to know that we should really get outdoors and we should really spend time on Mother Earth, in Mother Earth, you know, swimming in the lakes or whatever it is, or in the ocean or whatever's available to you. Put your feet in the grass, spend time outside and get as much sunlight as you possibly can. Why? Well, over the next couple of years, I have found through research, through watching the likes of Sasha Stone and people like Simon Parks, these kind of people, they've been talking about the fact that we're going to have codes come through the sunlight, energetic codes that are gonna come through the sunlight that are here to evolve humanity. I believe they're gonna evolve every species, right? But it kind of makes sense that this lockdown is coinciding with this and they're saying things like, you can't have sunlight or you can only go out for an hour per day. This kind of thing is just, quite frankly, it's, it's pretty bananas. And <laughs> what we've got to do is if you have a garden, if you have a park, if you have somewhere where you like to be, spend as much time in nature as you possibly can. Okay, that is what I'm gonna share with you because that's important. I do believe that the sunlight has codes and all kinds of wonderful magic inside it that, and it is here to evolve humanity. So we are rapidly evolving, we are rapidly growing and it can't be stopped. 
So I think that's another message from Mother Earth that you can't stop this no matter who you are and you know what you think you're able to do. This can't be stopped, it can't be prevented. Evolution is happening and it's good and I think we've got a lot to look forward to in the coming years. It's going to be tough um, for a little while yet but you know good things are coming. Now I'm going to read these White Eagle messages because they are so good. Hold on, I'll just move my tea without spilling it absolutely everywhere. Okay, now I just thought this was stunning and I'll read you the various messages that I thought were really good. So it says, this moment humanity is going through can now be seen as a portal and as a whole. The decision to fall into the hole or go through the portal is up to you. If you repent of the problem and consume the news 24 hours a day with little energy, nervous all the time, with pessimism, you will fall into the hole. But if you take this opportunity to look at yourself, rethink life and death, take care of yourself and others, you will cross the portal. Take care of your homes, take care of your body, connect with your spiritual house. Learn about resistance of the indigenous and African peoples. We have always been and continue to be exterminated, but we still haven't stopped singing, dancing, lighting a fire and having fun. Don't feel guilty about being happy during this difficult time. I love that message so much. Absolutely. Then it goes on. You do not help at all being sad and without energy. You help if good things emanate from the universe now. It is through joy that one resists. Also, when the storm passes, each of you will be very important in the reconstruction of this new world. For now, this is what you can do. Be serene in the storm. Calm down. Pray every day. Establish a routine to meet the sacred every day. Good things emanate. What you emanate now is the most important thing. And sing, dance, resist through art, joy, faith and love. So those are the messages from the White Eagle. I heard that uh, the White Eagle made its appearance in a reading by Amanda Ellis as well. So definitely there's this white eagle energy that's, that's going around right now. So anyway, why don't we get into the reading? Wow, this has been a bit of a long intro, guys. Apologies for that, but hopefully some of you like the intro. Let me know if the intro is good. Sometimes there is an intro, sometimes there isn't one. Today there is. I just had to get the messages out, so I, I suppose it doesn't matter. Um, if people are pressed for time, it's, I completely understand. All right, so now those of you who are here, please do pick from group one, group two or group three and I will see you in your reading. Hi there group one, for those of you who chose group one welcome to your reading. Let's take a look at your cards. As with any of my readings I do ask you to tune into your intuition, see what comes into your mind as you look at the symbols, as you look at the colors Aren't these just beautiful? So it says here, 31, sea sponge, emotional overload. All right. Then we have the next card. Oh, look at that. Thriving. I love this card. I've never seen it before. I've never drawn it before. It's a beautiful card. I love the colors. You've got a kind of full moon there too. That's actually significant. Wow, yeah, full moon for you guys. I had a brief little look at these before, but not too in depth. You've got the nine of wands upright. And then what else do you have? You have got the chariot upside down. Yeah. 
Oh, I love this. You've got the Queen of Hearts. This is just a normal plain deck, but it's, it's very gold, as you can see. It's a bit bling. One of the best cards you can possibly get in a regular deck. And for those of you who don't know, you absolutely can read a regular deck of cards. There are various systems that allow for that. Isn't that fascinating? I just, I just read them as tarot. There's, um, I've done my notes uh, and I've yeah, researched quite a bit on that. So um, I've got a system that I use for that. But it's kind of like tarot. It's pretty standard. Okay, so we've got growth. Isn't that beautiful? And you've got a crescent moon here. So we had a full moon over there. You've got a crescent moon here. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is waxing. Oh, no, it's waning. No, it's waxing. Yes, yes, of course it is growth. Yep, yep, yep. Beautiful. I, hope the, I think the light has just gone a little bit bright, hasn't it? There we go, that's better. Okay, and now this gorgeous card, Sita. How stunning. Isn't that beautiful? All right, and then what else do we have? We've got, now I'm working with two energies today. I'm working with the moon and Venus. I wanted to work with the feminine energies. So we've got moon in the 11th house. And this is the sidereal Vedic chart system. And we've got Venus down there in the eighth. All right. So let's take a look at this. What am I seeing here? Okay. I do think that this is about relationships. I do think this is about your love life and what's going on in your love life. I think for some of you, you're in a good relationship, but it's been overwhelming lately. Some of you, yeah, are in a tough spot. I think <laughs> there is, it's a bit, it's a bit of a tough spot, but it's, there's, it's not bad. Okay. Um, and I think this is very much a message of keep going. You can do this. You can get through whatever it is you're going through right now. If we have a look at the night of, sorry, the nine, not the night, the nine of wands here upright. We're looking at the fact that you have been working really, really hard. You're coming to the end of a cycle. I think you might be quite a bit tired, actually. I think there's been some things going on that have been emotionally draining. And I do, I, I really sense this is a, a relationship reading. <clears throat> the career, there's a career reading in this, um, in all of these. So you might want to look at um, pile number two if you're more interested in career. But if you do have a lot happening in your love life, stick around, this is the pile for you. Nine of Wands Upright, there's, you're, I think, at the end of a cycle. Uh, you're in the last phase of a cycle, and I think you've been working too much. You might be over-functioning in a relationship, okay? You might be thinking for the other person. You might be emoting for the other person. You've somehow taken on too much on your shoulders, and it's really tiring you out. Your cup is full. Okay, this is a great card, right? This is just beautiful. This is the queen of cups in tarot as well. It's gorgeous. But your cup is full. We've got a full moon here and there's water in this card as well. Uh, this tree, I did a little bit of research on this tree and apparently this tree is in the desert and it stores a lot of water. It's also the tree of a survivor, a survivor who just keeps going. And we've got that here in this nine of one's energy here. I mean, you're incredibly strong 
Okay, so that's another thing that's being presented here. You are so strong emotionally. Your cup is full and I'm getting that here as well. Some of you might be having a good time in relationship. Uh, I, I did get that sense as I was looking at this that, you know, some of you will be having a good time in relationship, but some of you will be, I think, tired and overloaded, overworked. Maybe you're overfunctioning for your partner, right? You're doing all the work. Something along those lines is what's going on here uh, in this reading. Why do I say relationships? I do say relationships because also because of these two. We've got the moon in Hope's Dreams Wishes, right, which is beautiful. But we've got Venus down there in the 8th. Uh, and that's going to come into play later. We'll talk about that in a moment. Chariot upside down. Traditional, one of the traditional meanings of this is a lack of control, lack of direction. Maybe you've reached a place in your relationship where you're not sure where things are going, okay? And you're wondering what's next, you know? You're emotionally overloaded. You're just, you're just tired. I don't know if you're even able to think uh, about that too clearly. But don't worry, Mother Earth is here and she's here to help you. So this is a good reading for you. Because if we look at this card, there is growth on the table. So you've definitely manifested growth. The other thing is, the other reason I do, do say that this is a relationship reading is because of this beautiful card here. This is Sita. Sita, of course, in Hinduism is the legendary goddess, the partner of Ram, the legendary god. You know, they were the ultimate couple. And she is famous for being extremely loyal. And I've got the note here, in serving those you love, you serve the divine. And even though there might be uncertainty in this relationship, or you might be wondering, where is this going? You know, what do I do with all this energy that I've got? Or whatever it is. I get the sense that you're just going to need a little bit of time out. Okay, we've got Venus here in the 8th. You're just going to need some time out. You're going to need some time on your own. All right. If you can hide out a bit, if you can hide, do your own thing, recharge, that would be fantastic because what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to use some of this fire energy. There's fire energy here as well. Okay. So there's fire energy. You'll be able to use some of this fire energy if you rest properly. Okay, you really do need to rest. I think your cup is full in many ways. You're overworked, you're over emotional, overloaded, overwhelmed. And if you can really, really rest, then these two are going to, you're going to be able to grow and you're going to be able to thrive. I really got a sense when I was looking at this briefly earlier that these two cards, there's like an energy underneath the problems that are on top. There are these kind of, and that, yes, that's what it is. It's tied in with this. Look at this. You've got the moon up here. And I got a sense of kind of water um, because we've got all these cups energy here and we've got this, right? I got a sense of water being at the top and the water is choppy for you right now okay so maybe if this isn't love then maybe this is the feeling and this is what you've been experiencing the waters are choppy 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 up there okay so if you stay up there it's going to be choppy and it's going to be a bit crazy a bit hectic a bit too much if you go into the deep deep water that's here in the eighth house there's deep still water You've got to hide, you've got to go deep, you've got to get to a place where things are still. And that's when you'll be able to connect with these two. And this is the growth that is here for you. You've manifested this, you've manifested growth and thriving. So you'll no longer be surviving doing what this tree does, you'll be thriving. Okay, you will be able to connect with what's growing under the surface 
the waves are choppy on top but there's something growing under the surface there's something there and if you can connect with this energy you can grow the next phase of your life okay and the next phase of your romantic life this is whether you're together or single it doesn't matter there's a dynamic that's coming to a close now there's something here that isn't working anymore this is going to close out uh, if you really can truly rest and each of you will know what that means and what kind of rest is needed if you're happily coupled up I mean it might be that the two of you get away um, you know find find a place to hide and, and do your own thing it might be that but uh, I, I'm getting definitely getting that this is about relationships and that you're going to be able to create that that next cycle that wants to open up for you it's but it's deep under the surface okay now let's have a look mother earth what is the message from mother earth this was something I looked at in advance now I've got here yeah it's time to hide for a bit discharge any emotional energy you have by lying on mother earth for 20 minutes when you do this you will discharge the EMFs that you collect in your body every day all day right electromagnetic frequencies we collect that in our auric fields now the way to get rid of that is to hug a tree <laughs> right or to sit with your back against a tree I've done that so much in England I love doing that there's a favorite tree that knows me very well um, so I've got my favorite tree but lately what I've been doing is I've been lying on mother earth for 20 minutes and it's enough to clean your field uh, of any sort of debris anxiety any emfs any of that and you will be able to grow the next level of your life yeah these two are strong you know a bit of fire energy a bit of creativity you've got that you've got fire energy and creativity in you you've got a lot of it there's a lot of fire here right so you'll be able to and you'll be able to do it because look at that venus down here this house is uh normally we've got you know mars up here and we've got mars here there's mars is a bit of a fiery thing too so would you believe in the deep dark still waters of scorpio you can be creative you can be extremely creative and i feel like that next level of life if you use some of that fire that's going to bubble up and you're going to really enjoy uh, the next thing that wants to manifest in your life but it is going to take a bit of time out on your part so group number one i hope that's been a good reading for you please let me know in the comments below how you got on with this reading i love to read your comments amazing things are happening with some people in the comments you know the synchronicity synchronicities the coincidences it's just incredible so let me know if this has been good for you um, please do like please share please subscribe it really helps me grow my channel i want to thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Hi there, group two. If you chose group two, you are in the right place. I'm gonna show you your cards in turn. You can take a look. As with any of my readings, please do use your intuition. See if this is meant for you. If it's not, you can click off onto another video. Uh, you know, I know that we're all pressed for time and you know, sometimes these work out spectacularly well and sometimes you know it may not be the thing now the first card out is rock pool number 24 healing okay and also i mean you have to use your intuition because you have to see which messages are meant for you uh, and which messages you know maybe you have to discard some messages maybe some of these are meant for you some of them aren't okay healing chaos Okay. <laughs> All right. We have got the Seven of Swords upright. And we've got the Page of Pentacles upright. We've got this very special golden card here. <laughs> it's just regular um, playing cards very gold 
and beer proof, <laughs> right? They're plastic. That's apparently like people use these in pubs and stuff like that. Uh, but you can use them as tarot cards as well. And I've done my research on that, so I know uh, the meaning of all these. It, it very much links to tarot. It's, it's virtually the same. So this would be the nine of, well, it's the nine of diamonds. I'm pretty sure, yes, that's pentacles, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. This would be pentacles. I was thinking it was swords for some reason, but no, I think that's, um, I'm feeling that's spades. Well, anyway, I looked up my, I've got a diary where I take notes and keep meanings. So I know the meaning of that. All right, we've got this beautiful card here, boundaries. Look at that, isn't that stunning? Love the colors here, number 12. Oh, that's my number, 12, three. <laughs> okay. Sahas, Sahasrara. We've had this before. It's crown chakra. Just beautiful. And this time I'm working with feminine energies. I'm working with the moon and with Venus. So you guys have got moon in the fifth. You could be a good astrologer. <laughs> you could. That's a classic placement for astrologers, actually. Uh, and Venus in the fourth. Wonderful. Okay, so this reading is really... As an overall, this, this one's definitely about career. Uh, if you've got more relationship stuff going on, you might want to check out group number one. But this one is definitely a career reading. In group number three, I have had a brief look. That's a bit more of a spiritual thing going on there. So you are welcome to watch other groups um, if you like. Now, as for what I see here, I think you've been going through a bit of chaos in your workspace actually and I'm getting that because we've got this moon here in the fifth I think there's been something going on with either people around you or your superiors or something along those lines right there's something going on at work and I'm getting that from healing the fact that there's healing needed you've also been going through healing chaos right so some of you have been trapped in here and then we've got this which is Basically, this is the Seven of Swords upright. This can be things like deceit. This can be someone being strategic. But I definitely got a vibe that I felt like maybe one of your superiors is not being okay or um, some authority figure at work or, or something. There's something not right. Swords are also arguments. Okay, it's air, it's mental body, it's mental energy it's it's all that kind of thing so I definitely got a vibe that this reading is saying there's something not quite right happening at work and this is actually needed okay in order to get you to think about what it would be like to do your own thing and this these two here are really indicating to me about the page of pentacles which is perhaps a new source of income Okay, uh, and this talks all about independence, self-reliance. This is also money. Okay, um, you've got the ability, I think, to be your own boss, to do your own thing, to create your own business, to, and it could be something where you want to work from home, which I mean, everyone is doing that now. But, uh, you know, that is indicated here whether there was this lockdown or not, right? So that, that would be something I would be saying, that you know a home-based business is here for you, but I definitely see new streams of income are going to become available to you or open up to you. Maybe it's just an idea at this stage. Maybe these are just ideas that you're playing with. Maybe you're actively gonna be implementing some things around this, but Basically, something about your work is not right at the moment. Um, you may need healing. You may need a bit of time out. You definitely need boundaries. Hello. <laughs> I mean, look at that, right? I mean, boundaries 
boundaries, boundaries, okay? And that that is going to resolve this. You'll be able to pretty much push this off the table if you solve and do this. So let's do it. Let's push that off the table, okay? Because, you know, who needs work dramas? There's enough going on in life right now. Boundaries are going to be so important and that really links into your healing. I'll bring them back just so that we know. <laughs> There we go, they're just there, okay? So we know what the dilemma is. But boundaries, yes, you're absolutely gonna be needing boundaries right now. That is gonna be your healing. And one of the notes that came up as I was doing a bit of um, research on this card was it said something about you teach people how to treat you, okay? And that is so true. We are in charge of quite a lot. Um, and you know, Sam Vaknan, he's great. If you wanna learn about boundaries, Type in Sam Vagnon, he's a psychiatry professor and I watch a lot of his content. He's absolutely fantastic. And he talks about a lot of people think that boundaries are like, you know, it's well, <laughs> boundaries are very much defining, you know, where, where, where I end and where you begin, right? That's how I see a boundary. But he had a really radical view on this, which I was watching recently. He said, boundaries are where you are not. And I went, whoa, and that's very Saturnian, right? We don't have any much Saturn energy on the table here. We've got a lot of, well, maybe crown chakra, right? But, um, but it, I thought about that and I thought, wow, where you are not, yeah, that's fascinating. So, because I, I do tend to see it from my point of view always. But that's another way of looking at the concept of boundaries, right? We've got the crown chakra here. Now, crown chakra is indicating that there are some downloads and insights and things that want to come through for you. Some new creative ideas are wanting to come in. And this could be a really good time to keep a dream journal or to, um, you know, I, ha I have a journal, it's a bullet journal. I, I write down all kinds of things in there. One of the things I've been doing is writing affirmations. And that's kind of how I'm creating my life. I write the affirmations of who I wanna be, what I wanna see, and I just write them down, you know. Um, even, oh, I'll share this one with you, <laughs> even trivial things like, um, this is gonna sound a bit crazy, but, so because I'm not seeing a chiropractor at the moment. So every now and then I'm always saying, my spine is perfectly straight, you know, and things like that. Just like giving the body these cues that like of how I want to grow and what I want to be, right? Um, and the other one I've been doing is that this is really ridiculous, but like my tooth enamel is getting stronger. Now, <laughs> that's a little bit like in depth or whatever, but it's because um, I was speaking with this person and she was saying that her teeth enamel is really bad and when she drinks lemon, it really affects her. And I thought, oh, I don't wanna have that. So I'm gonna have that as one of my affirmations, right? So, I mean, that's obviously a bit practical and boring, but I mean, you can make anything is what I'm trying to say here, that like you can create anything you want. You can create a healthy body, you can create a healthy mind, a healthy love life, a new source of income, it's on the table for you, okay? You can create a lot of money, all right? You can make that, that's the thing about making money, you can make money, that's here for you. Um, you can do all of these things and uh, you know, that is one of the things about healing and look at this, look at these energies that we've got here and we've got healing here. That's the thing about healing, healing is creative fifth house it's a very creative thing we can create what we want you know healing is a massive word and I don't think many people associate it with creativity as such and we don't have any fire energy on the table here maybe there's a little bit of fire in here in this healing chaos card uh, Definitely rapid transformation. Look at the butterflies that are flying out of here. You know, that's just incredible. But I think really one of the big points of this reading is that you can create what you want. You can create, um, there's a definitely massive creative energy here. And you can do all of this from the luxury of your own home, right? Luxury, Venus, fourth house home. <laughs> you know, you don't have to go anywhere. 
you can create the life of your dreams right now. Uh, it's, it's very much here for you, but it's, it's going to take some boundaries because otherwise this situation and these people and this difficulty that's being presented here, you really don't want to have too much of this. It won't allow you to heal. It won't allow you to manifest. It won't allow you to create. So you're going to have to work out ways to, to really, it's boundaries and we want to push this. Let's do it now. We're just pushing it out. Okay. We push it out of your sphere and, and get used to having all this beautiful, lovely space. Enjoy the space. Enjoy, um, you know, you want to make space for the money to come in. You want to make space for the downloads to come in from your crown chakra. You want to make space for definitely all that creative energy. Uh, improving your home as well, you know, healing. It's all here for you. This is a beautiful spread. I remember when I first looked at this one, I was just, I loved the colors for a start. And also this moon is kind of coming to be full. So that's quite interesting as well, but it's waxing, it's growing and you're growing as well during all of this time. So hi group two, just very quickly, I think I finished your reading, but I didn't tell you what your message was from mother earth. And I've got it written down. The message was simply take time out from the world and be creative. And we've got this boundaries card. I think she really wants you to take some time out. And we've got moon in the fifth, which is terrific for creativity. Of course, we've got crown chakra, these downloads that are coming in for you. You've got the real potential to take some proper time out, right? Healing, time out, rest, but be creative during this time. There's that lovely fire energy there, uh, a fiery moon. How amazing is that? So, you know, you'll be able to definitely be creative at this time. And what better way than, you know, one of the things I've been doing, and I think I mentioned it in a couple of places, in a couple of videos, I've mentioned that how I take my beach blanket, I lie on the ground and I just look up at the sky. But, you know, you could take a notebook you could take a book that you want to read or you know, if you want to be creative um, sitting out there in nature, that would be a wonderful thing to do. So that was it. I hope this has been a good reading for you, group number two. Please let me know in the comments below. Let me know how it has gone for you. Um, you know, you're always welcome to get in touch. If I don't get back in touch immediately, it's probably because I'm quite busy. But thank you so much for watching. Please do like. Please do subscribe and share and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi group three, welcome to your reading. Let's take a look at your cards. Now, as with any of my readings, please use your intuition as you go. Take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. Isn't that stunning? Gosh, I love this card. Jellyfish number 13 transparency okay freedom another beautiful card they're all so beautiful i could stare at these for hours which is so 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 lovely okay now you didn't get a gold card because what happened was as i was shuffling the tarot cards for you one of them popped out, so I thought, oh, okay. That means you're getting three from this deck. The moon, upright. But don't worry, if you watch another pick a card reading, you'll come across another gold card in time. Uh, four of wands reversed, okay. Ah, yes, I remember your one. It's a good one. <laughs> and you got the star reversed as well card of healing. It's also a card of Aquarius, right? Which is healing the collective consciousness. So yes, this is a very spiritual group, this one. Okay, we've got the void. Look at that. What an incredible picture. I just love that. She's just lying there. Yep. That is what the void feels like, that's for sure.
Krishna. Oh, how beautiful. Love this. So wonderful. And that looks like a full moon in the background too. And of course, he used to sing with his like thousands of girlfriends, right, in the moonlight. He used to sing and dance and play the flute and have a good time. He's just awesome. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, very nice. Well, yeah, there we go. We've got Venus in the fifth. That's cool. That's romance right there. Pretty sure Elizabeth Taylor had, I think she had Venus Rahu in the fifth, if I remember correctly. Off the top of my head. Okay, let's have a look. Moon in the ninth. All right. I remember this group. This is gorgeous, basically. This is this is a group of a very advanced group of people. So whoever's turned up for this one, you are spiritually very, very advanced people. Not that the other two groups aren't. They are very advanced as well, <laughs> but they are dealing with other stuff. They're dealing with earthly stuff this time. Oh, I just realized in group two, did I give them their message from Mother Earth? I don't think I did. Doesn't matter. Okay. Let's come back to you. Now, the other, you see, I got distracted because I was talking about the other two groups. Now, why was I talking about the other two groups? The first one was about love life. Second one was about career. You guys, if I had to say overall, it's about advancing your spirituality, uh, advancing, you're kind of, you're going on the advanced path here, or you, well, you are on it, but even more so, okay? So what am I seeing here? It's quite profound, all this. And where do I begin? For me, this doesn't have, I can't see anything to do with love, life or career or any of that. It's none of that stuff. This is, you're actually quite tapped in to the collective energies. So this card here, so firstly, I mean, this popped out and I saw it, so I had to take it. I only wanted two per group. This popped out in the reverse position. So this was the first card that came for you. It's healing the collective consciousness. I get the sense that you're quite in tune with the collective consciousness at this time. Some of you are probably um, working to help heal the collective consciousness, either in your conscious state or even in your dream state. So. Some of you have been working quite hard. I think you're quite tuned in to what's going on in the world. I think you're very tuned into what's going on in the world. And I think that you, this to me is normally, it's a happy home kind of card. And it can be in relationship readings. It can be, you know, marriage, expansion of home, all these kind of things. It's a very homey sort of, you've got number four here, very homey sort of card, right? But in this reading, it's to do with home, which is all of earth. And we've got Aquarius here, energy here. So it's, for me, this is, you're concerned about the collective consciousness. You're concerned about the world. You're tapped in, tuned into the world. You're really feeling it. You're really feeling the energies around you. This is moon here in the ninth. So you're tapped into even politics um, and things like that. It's really interesting. I didn't think this would come up at all in this time's reading. I really wanted the focus to be Mother Earth, but um, you know, it's interesting. You guys have, yes, I can see you're concerned. I can see. And this is about beliefs. This is, you see, because the ninth house, this is where we see authority, okay? Authority, government, all that kind of thing. You've got moon here, you've got your mind on these things. Your mind is with the collective. Your focus is there. Yes, I, I see it. So that's where you are. And I think at times it does feel like, I think at times it will get a bit depressing, um, to be perfectly honest. I think that can be the source of your tension sometimes. This is a card of the dark night of the soul. All right, the void is a beautiful space to be in though. And, and I think some of you have a lot of experience with that and I think you know how stunning it can be. I think you know how to ride it. I'm not too concerned. There's, I don't have to do too much coaching or any of that in this group. It's kind of like, you guys are switched on, you get it, you know, right? Um, we've got the moon here. The moon is your intuition, it's your mind, it's how you feel, it's all that stuff. So, 
and we've got freedom here which is incredible right because when you pass through this phase of what you're going through right now wow you've got extraordinary freedom coming to you um, it's you've manifested it okay it's literally on the table right so you've manifested it it's here to get here you're gonna to have to pass through the void yes um, it does mean meditating it does mean um, quietude being calm it also means here's the good bit here's the bit that I'm just dying to get to <laughs> transparency this card is just so profound that I can't tell you. When I was reading the description in the research, I was like, you know, I, I knew, I, I knew what I had to say to you guys. I had to share with you a quote by Michael Nimi. Now, Michael Nimi is an author that Osho absolutely loves. Osho has read his book, and I, I can't remember what the book is now. I've got it on my Kindle. I was reading it a couple of years ago. I think I read three quarters of it or the whole thing. I can't remember. But the quote from that book that struck me is a quote that ties this reading all together. And I'm going to read you the quote now, and it especially ties into this transparency thing, because this transparency card is very much about the thoughts in your mind. You know, how would you feel if they could be viewed by everybody? <laughs> right? So here's the quote. The quote by Michael Nimi is, so think as if your every thought were to be etched in fire upon the sky for all and everything to see. For so in truth it is. Oh, is that not just the most beautiful thing? I'm going to read it again. It's just so good, this quote. I love it so much. I'm going to say it again. So think as if your every thought were to be etched in fire upon the sky for all and everything to see. For so in truth it is. And that's why I say that you're an extremely advanced spiritual group because you've come to a place, you've graduated to a place where you're going to be able to live at that level. You're going to be able to live in such a way that if your mind were to be broadcasted, it would be okay, right? In fact, it would be a good thing for the world. You're coming to that place, right? Don't feel pressure from that. Don't feel like, oh God, like, you know, because we all have weird thoughts now and then. Yeah, everyone does. But like, and that's where Krishna's coming in. Krishna's coming in to tell you and to remind you that don't take this too seriously, okay? Uh, don't forget to play. Don't forget to have fun. And you can have fun with that concept, right? Think as if your every thought were to be etched in fire upon the sky for all and everything to see. I mean, how amazing is that? Imagine if you could make your angels laugh. Do you know what I mean? Right? It's like, and these two are also signifying the ability to find tremendous romance in the everyday, right? When you go for a walk at sunset and, you know, I don't know, the air is just crisp and well I guess in the northern hemisphere you know the leaves are turning color and here we've got all these birds and you can hear their little baby birds are chirping and there's so much romance and beauty and love in the everyday life and that's the other thing about why you're so spiritually advanced you are because you're able to appreciate this you know that love is not this thing and did I write that down yeah, I did. You have entered a time where you realize love is more than just passion between two people, right? That is definitely what you've manifested here. Okay, I love this spread. I'm just like, wow, who are these people? You know, what a terrific combination of cards. Because it, on the one hand, it, the, the only thing I, I would say if I had to be, you know, a bit sort of where you need to do a little bit of work, it is about not being too heavily invested in the collective. That's going to make things difficult. That's going to make this longer, okay? If you're, and I suppose we should, I should reorder these so that these go together because they do. Uh, and then we've got these over here. This void period, you know, or if you're going through a tough time or if you're feeling really stuck 
or things aren't moving or you know any of that right um, the way to get out of it the way to move through it and I mean it takes the time it takes and I think you know that as well can you make it faster maybe but I mean do you need to make it faster as well things are what they are and I, I have the sense that you have an appreciation of that but I feel like these cards very much go together and they're just kind of signifying and this is kind of like a bridge card really um, because this is your mind this is the moon and it's like and these this this is what you've got the tremendous you've got the tremendous ability to to detach from this through the use of your mind and to experience all of this to experience fun and romance and play on your own that doesn't require another person that's for you and your angels you know I often do that I make my angels laugh in my head <laughs> sometimes because there's nobody else around and so I'll just say silly things and I try and make them laugh you know and I, sometimes I make myself laugh in the process so you know, you've got the ability to do that right um, you've got the ability to feel free no matter where you are you know and that's there's so many heroes and inspirational people um, who've done that like Nelson Mandela you know he managed to feel free in a prison cell right so you've you've definitely got that ability right here and this gorgeous wonderful card I mean the ability for your mind to generate thoughts that are performance art imagine that right imagine if imagine if in real time you could just give your mind to the entire collective consciousness you know and say well come in here and have a look <laughs> because you know you you've got thinking down to a fine art in real time imagine that I mean if you're not there yet how about it as an idea and you've manifested it as a potential that you can evolve to that place where you are that it's just incredible right so this is a very beautiful spread very spiritual um, spread with you know people who are quite frankly I think you guys are very advanced and I think you're going to be exploring even deeper dimensions of your spirituality and, and, and coming across beauty and love and romance uh, in, in all kinds of sublime blissful beautiful ways you've got some very high vibrations um, on the table here to potentially explore so don't worry if you're here and you're not feeling it the potential to go very high and experience some absolutely stunning things is right here for you right so i hope this has been a good reading group number three now i better finish with mother earth's message for you mother earth's message for you is come and be with me in the night time okay she wants you to come and be with her in the night time and think about krishna and how he used to be with his thousands of girlfriends playing the flute and <laughs> romancing all these women um, in the night time you know how amazing and, and mother earth is inviting you uh, to spend some nights with her so just go out go out in the night even if when i was in my apartment in england the best i could do would be open my window and stick my head slightly out the window I didn't have a window that I could open and stick my head fully out the window but honestly there were so many nights where I would just go to my window and kind of stick my face out and just um, just feel the night time you know and that was all I, I didn't have a balcony <laughs> but now I have a garden so if you have a garden be in the garden right so that is all I have for you today group three please like please share please subscribe please do all the wonderful stuff and I look forward to seeing you next time.